Jessica's write-up for Lab 3 brought up an interesting question that um, I thought was pretty easy to explain, but when I got into it, it's actually pretty deep. And that is this convergence right here. I say that as n gets bigger and bigger, uh, 1 minus lambda over n to the power of n tends towards e to the power of minus lambda. And like I said, this is actually a pretty involved idea. Um, and I'm going to discuss it here. I'm not going to be able to prove it here. It takes a lot of work to prove this thing. But I am. I think I'll be able to convince you that it's true. At first case, it doesn't quite look like it's true. Because as n gets larger and larger, this fraction gets smaller and smaller. And what's inside here approaches 1. However, uh, what's inside here is smaller than 1. And it's getting raised to a large power for large n. If you raise a number smaller than 1 to a large power, then it decreases even more. For example, 1 half squared, it's not a large power, but it's positive power. 1 half squared is 1 fourth. 1 half cubed is 1 eighth. 1 half to the fourth is um, 1 sixteenth. So even though this number inside is close to 1, it's getting raised to a large power, which tends to drive it away from 1, and is why this limit is not quite equal to 1. Okay, so I'm going to try to convince you that um, convince you that, that limit is indeed true. So first thing I'm going to do is write down the definition of E that I'm considering in this course. There's a few different ways to define E, and this, I think, is the most common way to define E in high school. Because it doesn't require a whole lot of calculus. And that is the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 over n to the power of n. This is the same kind of thing we had in the video, except for it's just a simple plus 1 rather than a minus lambda. Here. And I'm just going to use a calculator to convince you that this limit actually does converge. So what I'm going to do is plug in um, larger and larger values for n. So if I take 1 plus 1 divided by... 100 to the power of 100, and that gives me about 2.7048. I'm going to go ahead and write that down here. 2.0748. Okay, now if I use a thousand, I do 1 plus 1 divided by a thousand to the power of a thousand, so I'm plugging in n equals a thousand here, I get 2.7169 about. So I get about 2.7169. What happens if we go up to 10,000? I get 2.7181, and notice these the numbers are still growing, 181, but they're not growing very fast, a 7 there. Okay, and if I do 1 plus 100,000, I guess it should be 1 divided by 100,000, to the power of 100,000, and I get 2.7183, about. 2.7183. And then if we do a million, I'll stop at a million. 1 divided by 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, to the power of 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, notice that when we round to the nearest, what is this? This will be the nearest 10,000th. It's still 2.7183. And indeed, my TI-83 plus calculator tells me that E is uh, 2.7182818 uh, to the nearest nine decimal places. Okay, so this is converging in towards a number that's between 2 and 3. And rounded to the nearest 10 thousandths, it's 2.7183. Now that's E. And I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that one. And what I was very surprised about when I looked into how to explain this is how difficult it is to get from there to the definition. And actually, it shouldn't be, I shouldn't have a colon here. I should just have an equals. Whenever you see a colon before an equal sign, what that means is E is being defined. It's not a statement. It's not a claim that they're equal. It's just a definition that um, this is what we mean by E. 
and well for my purposes I'm going to put a minus lambda here. So the claim I made in the video is that e to the power of minus lambda is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity and I'm going to have to make this a bigger font. of 1 minus lambda divided by n Oops. actually don't need those parentheses 1 minus lambda divided by n to the power of n so I've replaced this plus 1 with the minus lambda and that ends up creating the um, exponent and I'm going to state here that this is my claim. This is what I'm saying is true. And I'm going to try to convince you of that. I won't be able to give a technical proof of it, unfortunately. Okay, so what we do know is this definition for E. We know that E is this. It's this limit of 1 plus 1 over N to the power of N as N gets larger and larger. So, if I take e and I raise to the power of minus lambda, then I can think of that as this limit raised to the power of minus lambda. Okay, well when I do that, I'm going to take the limit outside. So for the next line here, I'm going to take this limit. Whoops. Can I do that? There we go. I'm going to put it outside. So I'm doing the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 over n raised to the power n raised to the power of minus lambda. And I can do this so long as this raising to the power of minus lambda is continuous at its limit, which it is. Maybe this would be a good problem for the advanced calculus course I'm going to be teaching this summer. And go through and do this more precisely. Okay, well if I have a power raised to a power, I can just combine those powers by multiplying. So I can think of this as minus lambda n on the power. And now I'm going to do a change of variables. And the change of variables I'm going to do um, is to get this power back to just a number n. And I'm going to have to use a capital N so that I am not using the same letter here. It gets confusing if you use the same letter. I'm going to let capital N be negative or minus lambda N, the opposite of lambda times N. So if I do that, then what happens? I get the e to the minus lambda is equal to the limit as capital N approaches. Now let's think about this. And this is the part that I was very surprised at. This is an issue that has to be dealt with. As N gets larger and larger, capital N gets more and more negative. You see that? If N is a thousand, capital N is negative lambda times a thousand. And lambda for, um, for the Poisson distribution where this result is being used is a positive number. So N is actually tending towards negative infinity. Okay. And then we plug in for, let's see, if I were to solve this, so this um, implies that little n equals capital N divided by minus lambda, which the negative sign could just come up, come out, but we won't do that quite yet. And then if I do 1 over n, then that's the reciprocal of this. It's minus lambda over n. And then this power is just n. Okay, now everything I've done so far, I defined e this way. I didn't actually prove that that limit exists, that this doesn't increase without bound. Um, but I gave you evidence of that with the calculator. From there, everything we've done is legitimate and perfectly sound. There's no waving of hands going on here. Um, I guess it might take a little bit of 
more th thought to think about pulling this limit out. But everything here is completely sound. And the hard part is dealing with this minus infinity. The claim I make in the video is that as n tends towards positive infinity, this 1 minus lambda over n to the power of n goes to e to the minus lambda. What I now have stated or what I've now have concluded here is that as n tends toward negative infinity, and this would be a capital N, then this limit is negative infinity. So the claim that we're going to need to address here is that this limit as n tends towards negative infinity is the same as the limit as n tends towards positive infinity. Okay, And to do that, what I'm going to do is plug in a really negative number and a really positive number. And again, use um, just a calculator to convince you that these are pretty similar. So I'm going to um, take lambda and I'll let it equal, let's say, 5. And then I'm going to let the left-hand side in equal, let's say, negative a million. And I'll let the right-hand side, right, because on the left-hand side, n is approaching negative infinity. On the right-hand side, I'll let n equals positive a million. And what we're going to do is compute this and see if they are indeed the same. Okay, so let's pull up the calculator here, and I'm going to plug lambda equals 5 into this expression on the left, and n equals negative a million. So we'll have 1 minus 5 divided by, there's a million, I'm going to hit this button to make it negative, and then we're going to raise that to the power of negative a million. Okay. And we end up with 0 0.006738. So we end up with left-hand side is approximately uh, 0 0.006738. And let's see what happens on the right-hand side. Okay, here I'm going to plug in lambda equals 5 and n equals positive a million. So that will give me 1 minus 5 divided by a million raised to the power of a million. Okay. And we see that indeed these do round to the same, what is that? That's the nearest millionth, actually. And the right-hand side is approximately 0 0.006738. Okay, now what is not true is that these two values are actually equal when you change the sign of capital N. They're a little bit different. They're a little bit different here, um, but as you make n really, really large, that difference becomes insignificant. So there is my justification of um, of when I said on this video that one minus lambda over n or to the power of n, as you let n get really, really large, that tends towards e to the minus lambda.